He is coming to give you and I, his people, individually and collectively, a new heart and a new spirit. Those hardened hearts that are walking in unbelief, he wants to pour out a new spirit, give a new heart. So that we can truly know him. And when we know him, then that's what's going to incite us and compel us to tell others about him. And there's going to be a tangible power and presence because our hearts, oh, they have been totally gripped by this passionate God full of zeal. Hey everyone, this is Wanda Alger, and today is Thursday, March 28th. I want to share with you a very powerful word that I just released on my website here today, and it's talking about God's passion. And I don't think it's any coincidence as we head into uh, the Easter weekend, and this has been the Passion Week, God has been speaking a lot about his heart and his passion and his emotions. And you may think, well, what does this have to do with anything that uh, is in the news, you know, the eclipse? the coming months, uh, the chaos, who knows what, this has a lot to do with it. And I'm going to tell you why, okay? Uh, but before I get to this word, I want to uh, share things that I usually save until the end, because uh, I want you to be aware of how to get access to these articles that I often share on my YouTube channel, uh, because I did just release this on my blog. And so if you go to my blog, and I'm going to take you there here, uh, this is actually the events page. This is my blog, wandaalger.me. And if you scroll down here, I offer two options. One is the weekly newsletter, which basically gives uh, everything that I put out in a given week, words, articles, videos, resources, whatever. You can also just sign up for real-time alerts, which basically just means whenever I post a new word, it will go right to your inbox. That's all you get. There's no other additional content. It's, it's just the article. And so here, if you go up, you can see my blog. If you click on that, you'll see all the blog articles that are there. You can even go over here and, and choose which ones you want. You can even put a put a word if you're wondering if I've written, because this is over, what, 12, wor 12 years worth of resources and articles, okay? Uh, if there's a topic that you're interested in, you can even just type it on this search bar, and everything that I've written about that will come up. So I've tried to make it as user-friendly as possible, but here's, here's all the uh, different categories that I have. Here's this latest word that I'm going to share today. Okay, so just be mindful of that. But while I'm here, I also wanted to show you some upcoming events. Uh, next weekend is going to be the, the Unlocking Prophetic Revelation conference with Andrew Whalen. I've told many of you it's already sold out. It's a very small venue. It's our home church. We can only hold 200 in person, but we're live streaming it. Okay, so if you want to uh, watch, it's next Friday night. Uh, several sessions on Saturday. Andrew will be ministering on Sunday morning as well in our two morning services. But if you want uh, the details to that, you can click uh, on here. It'll actually take you to our church website. There's directions. Uh, all the information is actually on, on the church website. So you can go there. Uh, and I want to tell you next, uh, Andrew's going to be speaking a, a lot. I'm going to be doing some things as well. Please watch the live stream. And I'll, I'll be announcing this more in my newsletter the specific times and where you can go. It's on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Community Church. But I did want to let you know as well, I'm going to be in Waterloo, Iowa, uh, April 20. It's uh, a one-day Saturday conference there at the Crossroads Assembly of God Church. Go check that out, okay? I'm going to be there all day, and I'm going to be there Sunday morning as well ministering. So if you're in Iowa and you want to make a trip, uh, come on. Then May 3rd through May 5th, I'm going to be in the Houston-Austin area in Texas, Bobby is going to be with me on this one, and we are going to be talking about community prayer, building kingdom, establishing a people of prayer and power. This is actually a smaller venue. I think it's at a private ranch, so there is a limited uh, number of people that can sign up, and there is a cost to it, uh, but I'm going to be in that area, and then you can see uh, Moorfield, West Virginia, going back to Lair, North Dakota here uh, later this summer. Uh, pretty amazing time, so that's what you can find on my website is just different places that I'm going. If, if you want to be there in person, we'd love to see you. So I've been sharing somewhat in, in past videos about emotional healing. And I've been uh, really blessed by all the comments and testimonies that I've been getting uh, from everyone. And let me tell you personally, uh, and you have to understand why this is a big deal to me, because the kind of calling and gifting that I have as a prophet, I 
I live the word. God makes sure that I experience it, that it becomes very personal for me. So it's not just some nebulous idea out there that I'm, I'm giving, but it's very real to me because I'm experiencing the word. I'm living the word because that's what gives me insight and, and understanding as to what he's trying to tell everyone else because he's doing it in me. Okay. And, and, and I, I embrace that. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Sometimes it's not as easy as I'd like, but, but that's okay. But God's been doing a lot in my heart. As a matter of fact, over a year ago, he gave me a very specific dream that I knew was for me, and I won't share the dream, but his word was, Wanda, you need to synchronize your heart with mine. And there was an angel that was in the dream, and he put a stethoscope up to my heart, but it wasn't the physical heart. He put it down in, right in my gut, and, it, and I knew it was, it was that area, the, the soul area and the heart. God said, you need to synchronize your heart with me. And this is what he has been speaking actually this whole last year, this synchronizing, which there's a lot of ramifications to that. And it's syncing not only our heart, it's, it's our spirit, soul, mind, and body. These are the things I've been sharing on this whole last year. There is a synchronization. Why? Because the enemy is trying to sync us to his rhythms. The enemy is trying to synchronize us to a whole different system that is anti-Christ anti-God. And so this is why it's so important that we pay attention to how the Holy Spirit is, is drawing us into this journey of synchronization, of getting in tune, of getting healthy in all these areas of our life, because that's what's going to combat and push back against the enemy schemes that are coming against us. So as I've been talking about this emotional healing in recent weeks, I know I've been experiencing it. There's been a grace where things that I thought I was over past things, the Lord just brings up and, and I'm finding depth of understanding. I'm finding a new level of freedom. And this is so important because God is doing this in preparing us for what is ahead. He wants us to be a people of power and, and, and it's power to overcome our enemies because of some things that we're going to have to walk through. And I can tell you, you need to stay tuned because within the next few days, next week, the Lord's going to have me release a word. It is, it is very heavy and it is very needed to hear. I'm still praying into it, uh, but I can tell you the first part, it, it's code red. God is wanting to alert us to some things, to be prepared, to get ready. And it's this heart readiness that he's very serious about. Because in order for him to fill us with his heart, with his power, with his authority, We've got to clear ours out. This is why all the house cleaning. This is why we're, we're renewing our minds and getting free of these things so that we can be vessels to contain the new wine, okay? So this also has to do in the area of our heart and our soul. When I was asking him about it again here this week, he said, Wanda, apart from my passion, there is no power. Because I want us to look at God's passion. We don't often think, of God as a God who has emotions. And this is something I've told you before, the religious spirit and, and the spirit of the age, the, the, the attitude of Pharisees, they don't like emotions. You know, they just want us to have a static religion that's void of feeling because it's subjective, yes. But we have to understand who God himself is. And this, that's what this article is about that I'm gonna be drawing from. Because there is a level of power that God wants us to know. Now, we, we live by faith, okay? This is not just about our feelings. We live by faith, which is based upon the truth of God's word. You don't have to feel it to live and walk by faith because you know the word. We know that our authority comes through our obedience. When we do what he says and we're obedient, that increases our, our authority uh, from heaven uh, to, to walk and to live. But the power that I'm talking about and that he is referring to is a tangible confidence. It is a zeal, a strength that he wants, he needs us to have in the days ahead. So you need to listen to this. Even for those of you, it doesn't matter if you think you're left brain or right brain, or if you think, well, I'm not an emotional person, or I don't feel that much, or, you know, why do we have to talk about these things? No, you need to listen because you need to know who your God is. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be share here, and I'm just going to pull out some things from this article. Like I said, you can go on my blog, uh, WandaAldrew.me, and you'll find the written copy of this. But the Lord led me to Ezekiel 36, and this was a passage where he was uh, rebuking Israel because his nation, the people, had turned their back on him. They had gotten apathetic towards him. They had hardened their hearts towards his laws, and they had just uh, you know, succumbed to these pagan gods, and he wanted them back. But he knew that they needed a heart transplant. And so here in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, this is his promise to them. He said, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put in you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. God knew that the only way that they could even follow him was if they had a new heart. They had to have his heart. And this is what he wants for you and I. And I found it interesting as I was writing this, you know, I, and I referenced this in a past video, that rather than trusting a plan for our redemption as a nation or the body of Christ or as believers, you know, God rarely asks us to trust a plan. What he asks us is to follow his heart, to know his heart. We need to, we need to understand what he's saying. And so John 15, 9 is one, as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. You know, we, this language is so familiar. We, we forget what it really means to love God you know, with all our heart, soul, mind, and being, and to know him, do we even really know who he is? And so I write in this article, it is because of a heart issue. Well, actually, I didn't include it in, in these notes. See, God is doing a major work in, in the church because we have gotten compromised, just like Israel did. We have allowed foreign gods, idols, into, his, into God's house. And, and he knows you know, we need a cleansing. This is what he's doing. He's cleaning house, both corporately and individually. And he's wanting us to, to have a new heart. I said, false gods and idols of men have become fixtures in his house, and they will only lose their influence and power when his people want them to. Hey, pay attention to that. We can speak against idols and false gods, other uh, priorities, things of this world, car carnal things. We have to want to be free, to be free. It's a heart issue. So he's going after our hearts, the seat of our desires and passions, the place where our will is fueled. You know, Proverbs 4.23 says that it's from the heart that all issues of life flow. And it is only from our heart that we are able to even love God. Thus, we must trade our hearts for his. We're talking about a heart exchange. We're talking about a heart surgery, heart transplant, okay? But let's, let's talk a little bit about what does it mean to even um, be one who pursues God's heart? You know, 1 Samuel 13, 14 references David, and we're going to talk about him in a minute. It says, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people. You know, you think about that. Why does God tell us to seek his heart? Why not his, his laws? Why not his mind? Why, why not the methods or, or seek out his plans? You know, he repeatedly says, seek my heart. Why is that? I believe in our religious mindsets, we have focused so much on keeping his commands and doing the right thing that we forget that God feels God has emotions. Yes, he does. And he feels deeply. His heart contains his emotions. Whether we call them expressions of his spirit or an overflow of his nature, God feels deeply and passionately about what he does. He's never passive about anything or anyone. He is a God who expresses himself in countless ways and longs for his people to know the depths of that passion. And so here's some scriptural examples of just 
how God feels about things and the emotions of God. And I'm not going to say all the references here, but they're in, in my blog. If you want them, we know he's a God full of compassion, but he is also a God who has extreme hatred for sin. He is jealous for his own and he grieves deeply when rejected. He rejoices without hesitation and he laughs at his enemies. He expresses fierce anger towards the wicked and yet has great pity on the oppressed. He acts with intention and he is never flippant about anything. God feels deeply. He is not just a, a, a robotic figurehead that just lays down the law. Now, again, that's what the religious spirit wants us to believe. And that's, that's unfortunately what many in the church, dead church, also want us to believe. And anyone that begins to express the emotions of God, you know, gets tagged as, well, that's just emotionalism. And obviously we know emotions can be subjective. Yes, because we have human emotions, but we can't throw it all out. What is God's emotion? Because if God lives in us, I want to have God's emotions. I want to have God, because that's God's heart. This is what I'm saying. This is, this is what we bypass so many times. We're talking about how God feels about things. He actually wants us to feel the same thing because that's who he is. Well, everything God says and does flows from the depths of his heart because he loves. And if we're going to become a nation that follows after God in truth and righteousness, we have to first pursue his heart. We must allow him to change our motivations and fully embrace what inspires and incites him to move because this is what will move us. We're supposed to be conduits of his heart. Now, again, I was referencing David in Acts 13, 22. He raised up David to be their king of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Now, you know, David's kind of the standard bearer here as, as one who, who's a man after God's own heart. But why is that? Because if you really look at David, in terms of his morality, he was not very pure. What was it that captured God's attention about David? Yes, he, he repented of his sin, you know, when confronted. But is that what made him a, a man after God's own heart? Well, based upon all of his writings, I would like to suggest an overriding characteristic of David was that he was passionate. He was a passionate lover. He felt things earnestly and profoundly. His convictions did not just stem from knowing the laws of God, but knowing the heart of God and what moved God. David pursued the depths of God's heart and was uniquely in touch with God's passion. And as I said, any purity that David possessed was, was not in his morality, but it was in his intimacy with the Lord. He constantly pined for this deep connection with his God. And even when faced with God's severe judgment against his sins, David's response was, just draw closer. God so loved David's pursuit of him that he made David's prayer journal the longest book in the Bible. God wanted us to experience the depth of David's longings, hopes, and all that he felt as he pursued this deep place of knowing his God. The biblical narrative reveals a man of fierce intensity of soul that was repeatedly laid bare. David was vulnerable. He wasn't afraid to lay it all out. He allowed himself to feel. He was consistently drawn to the Lord's heart because it was there that he found a depth of understanding he didn't find anywhere else. When troubled, it was God's heart that pulled David out of the pit and into a secure place of trust. God ministered to David's soul, and God relished David's pursuit. And I would like to suggest God is not done looking for hearts like David. He is searching to and fro for those who are willing to risk vulnerability like David did and to lay our souls bare without fear. That we're willing to lay it all, all out and that we recognize that God feels deeply. And we want to know that part of God. This is why he longs to heal 
many hearts in this season and go after those hidden recesses of our soul to make room, see, for this heart exchange. He is coming to give you and I, his people, individually and collectively, a new heart and a new spirit. Those hardened hearts that are walking in unbelief, he wants to pour out a new spirit, give a new heart so that we can truly know him. And when we know him, then that's what's going to incite us and compel us to tell others about him. And there's going to be a tangible power and presence because our hearts, oh, they have been totally gripped by this passionate God, full of zeal, with great love. Yes, he's coming with judgment. And I, in Ezekiel 36, this was his promise to Israel. He said, I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you, I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. See, he wants to demonstrate this passion and this love through you and I. This is why this heart transplant has to happen to make room, to find this healing, this place of freedom and vulnerability that we can express and be conduits, be vessels of God's heart, of his zeal, of his passion. This is what's going to burn up all the enemies of God, is this fire of God's love, the fire of his passion. This is what he wants us to remember. He's coming with vindication. Yes, he is going to bring justice to the oppressed. But he's going to make this trade. And for those hearts of stone, he's going to give a heart of flesh. And that simply means hearts that are willing to be vulnerable. And yes, it does mean that we have to deal with our own human emotions and have to sort it all out. But like I've said before, emotions are not right or wrong. They are expressions. They need to be based in truth. And see, that's the difference. With God's emotions, they are based and they come out of absolute 100% pure truth. That's what makes them so powerful and their expressions. God is going to bring justice. He's going to turn hardened hearts of stone to hearts of flesh that are totally yielded to the cries of his heart. He longs for a people who, like David, have sought his heart and are inspired to act, not because we have to, but because we want to, out of love. So it's to this end that God is pursuing us. It is to th this end that he has taken his time to cause us even to get into these situations where we have to confront issues of the heart. We have to confront the things that we're thinking, the things that we're believing. Because remember, emotions are simply expressions of our beliefs. This is why they have to go together. He's getting after our mindsets, the lies that we believe, because he wants our expressions of those realities to be him to be demonstrated in tangible evidence to a dying world that he is a God of love, he is a God of power, he is a God of truth. He's coming with vindication, but he's coming to rule, to reign through you and I so that the world could really know him. This is the amazing thing. God wants to set your heart free. He wants you to know his passion. And it doesn't matter you know, if you think you're an emotional person or not. You know, if we simply would say, God, I want your heart, let it up to him how that looks. I mean, the fact is, we're not all going to express things the same way, okay? But I would hope that you don't say, well, I just don't feel things. Just ask for God's heart. Are we willing to do that? And those of you who, who spend a lot of time in prayer, you know how important this is, because many times in intercessory prayer, God actually gives us his heart to even know how to pray. Because when you feel his heart of grief over sin, when you feel his heart of anger towards wickedness, towards corruption, oh, that impacts you. You pray from a totally different place. And there is an authority on it when it is God's heart. Now, there's risk in that. Because like David, you may appear foolish to men. When we allow God to express himself through us, not everyone will understand. And I think that's something we need to be ready for. Probably be talking about this in months, months to come. 
Because when his spirit is poured out, I believe we're going to see much more of an increase of the expressions of God. And it's, it's going to be a little disconcerting to people if you're not used to that. But hopefully we can recognize God's heart because we've spent time with him and we have pursued his heart. We, we're, we're based in the scripture. We know the word of God and who he is, what the word says he is, who, who he is and how he expresses himself. I think it's pretty exciting. And I hope you do too. So my closing prayer, I just want to share with you from Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord.